Welcome to today's segment of Demystifying Medicine. Today we'll be taking a look at fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia is a musculoskeletal disorder that results in pain amplification. The pain system of individuals suffering from this disorder becomes more sensitive. Two of the most common symptoms experienced by individuals with fibromyalgia include chronic widespread pain and tenderness in a number of muscular points. Some other symptoms experienced include sleep disturbances, fatigue, headaches, depression, as well as aching joints and muscles. There are four main factors that increase susceptibility to fibromyalgia, including sex, age, genetics, and the presence of other rheumatic diseases. Interestingly, 80 to 90% of individuals diagnosed with fibromyalgia are female. This is because females undergo menopause, which results in a decrease in estrogen levels. Most women with fibromyalgia experience an early onset of menopause, which leads to decreased exposure to estrogen, resulting in pain hypersensitivity. A study done this year by Dias et al. confirmed that 65% of female patients undergo menopause prior to being diagnosed with fibromyalgia. Most individuals diagnosed with fibromyalgia are between the ages of 20 to 50 years old. The prevalence of this disorder increases as you get older, with the highest prevalence rate being in individuals above the age of 60. An individual is more likely to have fibromyalgia if a family member has been diagnosed with it, which indicates genetic susceptibility. Lastly, the presence of other rheumatic diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis, spinal arthritis, and lupus arthritis can increase the risk of fibromyalgia. What exactly causes fibromyalgia? The chronic pain that patients experience is a result of amplification of sensory signals, blunting of inhibitory pain pathways, and imbalances in neurotransmitters in the central nervous system. Let's first take a look at normal pain processing, which involves two neural pathways, the ascending and descending pathways. Focusing on the ascending pathway, peripheral nerves transmit nociceptive signals to the spinal cord for transmission and the brain for processing. Focusing on the descending pathway, facilitatory and inhibitory pain signals are sent from the brain to the spinal cord to the periphery, either increasing or decreasing the processing of incoming nociceptive signals. This is analogous to turning up or down the volume control settings of these signals. The higher the volume, the more pain experienced. For fibromyalgia patients, neurotransmitters that increase ascending pro-nociceptive pathway signaling such as substance P and nerve growth factor are present in high amounts in the cerebrospinal fluid. In addition, amino acids that contribute to pain amplification such as glutamate are also present in high levels. Neurotransmitters that are involved in the descending antinociceptive pathway to decrease the volume of incoming pain signals are present in low levels in the cerebrospinal fluid. This includes serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. These aberrant pain processing mechanisms result in the development and maintenance of chronic pain in patients with fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia is variously under or over misdiagnosed as it is quite similar to various rheumatic disorders which makes differential diagnosis challenging. As soon as a patient presents symptoms of chronic widespread pain, they are screened for symptoms such as unrefreshed sleep and fatigue, this is then often followed by a complete review of past clinical history before the diagnosis of fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia is rarely a standalone diagnosis and is often accompanied by other chronic overlapping pain conditions and mental disorders. How can fibromyalgia be treated? Since there is no cure, medication and lifestyle changes and therapy can help the individual manage pain and symptoms. Pain relievers are a great way to manage pain caused by fibromyalgia. Over-the-counter medications may be recommended to reduce inflammation and help improve sleep quality. Medication includes aspirin, ibuprofen, and naproxen sodium. Antidepressants may also be recommended to help with pain and tiredness. However, these come with side effects such as nausea and weight gain. Anticonvulsants may also help with pain. Lyrica is a common FDA-approved anti-seizure drug for fibromyalgia pain. Gabapentin is also well known, but these come with side effects such as swelling and dizziness. Yoga has been proven to improve mood and fatigue in people experiencing fibromyalgia. Physical therapy and acupuncture are other ways to help ease the pain. Now that you have a basic understanding of fibromyalgia, you can consult a doctor if you are experiencing some of the symptoms of this condition. 